Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, the channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. You know, I need a break from politics every day, day in and out. Of course, I know that it's a political commentary channel, but who's to say that I need to put myself in a box to box myself in? In this video, I just want to have a little bit of fun because this story is absolutely crazy, and it's the type of mystery that I just love. There's supposedly an American fugitive accused of the word that we cannot use on this platform, R-A-P-E, some people call it grape, who apparently faked his death, fled to Scotland, assumed multiple different identities, supposedly Interpol recently identified him, he's been arrested, and is now facing extradition back to the United States, and while he did this interview on NBC Dateline, which is just out of this world crazy, we gotta cover this insane viral story, we've got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. Alright friends, so let's first start off with the context. Here's the headline from the Post Millennial, accused American word that we cannot see who assumed fake identity as a disabled man in Scotland will be extradited. Here's a very small clip to kind of give you guys the context from a new segment on Scotland Tonight. Around the same time, Nicholas was openly advocating against abuse. Assaulted a young woman in Ohio in 2008. Nicholas was initially wanted by US authorities over one charge of rape in Utah, dating back to 2008. He has now been served with two more extradition requests from a state, one relating to the rape of a woman in Salt Lake City and another for a sexual assault in the city of Orem. Investigations have also been carried out into various counts of fraud. So that should give you most of the details that you need to know on what's going on here. Now back to the post-millennial article, or really, back to the crazy part. Nicholas Aliverdian, aka Nicholas Rossi, 35, of Rhode Island, is currently being held in a Scottish prison awaiting extradition after a Scottish judge refused to believe his identity claim, reports the Daily Mail. The judge refused to believe his identity claim. Now that seems totally unbelievable, as you guys are going to see from this NBC Dateline segment. I mean, it's just so convincing. There's no way that this man is acting or trying to hide something. We were once a normal family, but thanks to the media, our lives have been interrupted. And we'd like privacy, and I would like to go back to being a normal husband. But I'm, I can't, because I can't breathe, I can't walk. Uh, people say that's an act. Let me try to stand up. Let me try to stand up. Exactly. Exactly. What do you say to, to someone who believes that, that you are Nicholas Oliverdian? I am not Andrea. I am not Nicholas Oliverdian. I do not know how to make this clear. What do you say to people who say these are crocodile tears? He's putting on a show. This is all an act. <laughs> oh, he Andrea, no, that's, that's a low blow. That's a right low blow. Crocodile tears has to be the only way to describe it. I mean, this moment right over here? Let me try to stand up. Let me try to stand up. Exactly. Exactly. Let me try to stand up. He then stands up, falls down in the most ridiculous fashion possible with his arms flailing. Clearly, totally fake. And follows up by saying, exactly. Exactly what exactly? I mean, we don't know it for sure, but just based on the fake acting, the fact that it looks like he's definitely putting on a show, I'm inclined to believe that he's full of it and most likely the individual identified as Nicholas Rossi that American law enforcement officials are looking for. And on top of it, the very cringe, inconsistent Scottish accent, it seems like he goes in and out of it. Oh, no, no, Rossi. I'm not Nicholas Rossi, no. It's definitely not me. Ho ho! Look, I can't even stand up. <laughs> what am I even watching? Look, again, I know the topic's not politics, but this is peak internet entertainment. Let's delve into some more details. Aliverdian was due to appear in court last week, but failed to appear following an altercation. He was seen leaving Edinburgh Sheriff's Office, wheelchair bound, and his extradition hearing has been postponed until a later date. The U.S. is seeking to extradite Aliverdian so that he can stand trial for multiple adult style assault charges, including the 2008 RAPE of a 21-year-old woman in Utah. The fugitive was first identified as Nicholas Rossi after arm tattoos described in an Interpol alert were flagged to police during a hospital stay in October of 2021. Aliverdian was suffering from the COOF, which he claims is the source of his ongoing breathing difficulties. Aliverdian refused to provide a DNA sample or fingerprints at the time, but was eventually fingerprinted in July of 2022, after he was arrested for threatening hospital staff. This led to the judge confirming Al 
Oliverdian's identity in November of 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the greatest criminal mastermind in world history. A guy who faked his own death and then fled to Scotland, assuming a different identity. A total makeover. Except he didn't get rid of his tattoos, which have been cataloged by law enforcement. Take a look at these. You know, very specific tattoos which could very easily be used to identify him. No, it's not me. Those tattoos could have belonged to anyone. The greatest criminal mastermind of all time. Ending up in the hospital and instead of keeping a low profile, he starts a fight with the nursing staff and ends up having the police called on him. This criminal mastermind had the genius plan of changing his identity, becoming totally unrecognizable with a very simple yet ingenious strategy of eating a 24-7 diet of fish and chips, gaining 150 pounds, and purchasing Harry Potter's reading glasses from a local gift shop. But I love this story, I love this identity mystery. Those of you guys who've been watching me for a long time know that before I did YouTube, I was working as an artist on movies. I'm not an expert character modeler or character designer, but I did study anatomy, and so I love these identity mysteries. I put together this collage of this Nicholas individual. He's a real shapeshifter, playing all kinds of different roles. Here's him looking like a disgruntled gamer 4chan user. Here's him looking like a MySpace boomer party boy. Here he looks almost like a politician, and here he is as he was gaining weight. He shapeshifts and looks a little bit different in all the photos, but I can still tell that it's the same person. There's a couple telltale signs. Firstly, the overall shape and size of his nose is consistent throughout the photos, but the most telling is his bottom lip. It's a little bit heavy and you can tell there's significant skin and fat cells on either side of the bottom lip that seem to protrude and the top lip has a very distinct, very wide cupid's bow. That refers to this top sort of, I guess we could call it like a camel's back double top area of the lip here. It's clearly the same individual in all of these photos. Now, if we look at the most recent photo of this individual, it's hard to target those specific identifying factors because he refuses to take the mask off. He refuses to show his tattoos. But even then, it's hard to hide your facial anatomy. The top shape of his eyelid is extremely flat. The size of his eyes, basically identical, the brown line. And probably the most obvious identifying factor, the teeth, which pop up in a lot of the photos that I showed you earlier the two front bunny teeth the one on the right appearing slightly lower than the one on the left i'm referring to his right and his left placed slightly above the two gapped front teeth well frankly it's uncanny you know these are biological markers that are very hard to fake it's why facial recognition works at such a high level of accuracy i don't know i'm looking at the facial anatomy and i'm pretty convinced it's the same dude this act let me try to stand up let me try to stand up exactly exactly well, it's just not convincing. Anyways, really not much else to be said. I just thought you guys would get a kick out of this video. And of course, if you did, if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. You know that we'd love to have you here at the Liberal Hive Mind. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.